Welcome again, everyone, and good Friday evening to you. It is Weather for Weather Geeks time, a busy weekend ahead with a little bit of everything as winter stage is a brief comeback, although, you know, it'll look pretty wintry uh, when this comeback occurs on Sunday. We're going to have our kind of most wintry day in a few weeks across the area. But in the meantime, today overachieved a little bit. You know, yesterday kind of underachieved in the weather department. Today, we had a little more sunshine than we bargained for. And so we got up into the mid 60s this afternoon, 65 this afternoon and 36 the low just after midnight. Now, of course, today is March the 8th and we had some sunshine today and we're hoping that a month from today, we have even more sunshine because a month from today, of course, is the total solar eclipse visible, the path of totality visible uh, across much of Ohio, including parts of our television viewing area. Now, the historical odds aren't great for a sunny day on April the 8th. It's still a pretty cloudy time of the year around here. It's only about 5% when we look back at historical records. Only about 5% of the time is it just pretty much cloud free at 3 p.m on April the 8th, you can see that the overcast conditions, actually it's about half the time that it's completely overcast. So we're hoping this year is definitely an exception. And of course, the, the eclipse is a big deal. Um, we have not had a total solar eclipse in the state of Ohio since just after Ohio became a state way back in 1806, just three years after Ohio's birth date uh, when it became a state in 1803. The president was Thomas Jefferson and the biggest kind of worldwide you know, news event, if you will, will, in 1806 was the Lewis and Clark expedition, which was ongoing. All right, so, you know, a lot of questions, and I suspect we'll get more and more questions. What about this town? What about that town? Uh, you know, is it a total eclipse here? Is it not here? Best thing you can do is head uh, to Google, or more specifically to timeanddate.com, and find the eclipse section there, and you can put in your location and see exactly what the percentage is for your specific location, the percentage of the of the sun's face covered up by the moon. But generally speaking, on a zoomed out view of the map here, the max totality, uh, in other words, where totality lasts the longest, will be from about Sandusky over to Cleveland, out over Lake Erie, and then up into western New York. Now, the totality does get our viewing area, a good chunk of Trumbull, a good chunk of western and northern Mercer, and extreme northwestern Mahoning as well. As far as some individual towns, and again, we can't put every location on these maps, but you know, you can kind of extrapolate where your location is. Uh, you know, we can we can get a ballpark estimate as what as to what you can expect. We are going to see totality everywhere where you are in the yellow or orangish red color. Now, on the southern fringes of this, it doesn't last very long, but it's still you know cool. Weathersfield, Niles almost down to Austin Town, uh, just north of Austin Town, really, up towards the Trumbull County line, uh, McDonald area. That's where uh, the totality will start. So it's 30 seconds to a minute on the southern areas, but once you're far enough north into Trumbull and northwestern Mercer, you know, this is two and a half, three minutes worth of totality. And so uh, those are the places that uh, will definitely, uh, those are the places to go to because, you know, totality is really much, much different than even 99% coverage. Um, a 99% eclipse is really cool. You'll be fortunate to see it. Um, but 100% eclipse, that's that's where you really, really want to be. And again, fingers crossed for the weather, even if it's a cloudy day, even if it's raining, um, it's still going to be cool in that path of totality because it'll get dark for a couple of minutes in the middle of the day. It'll seem like nighttime for a couple of minutes in that path of totality. It's just you won't be able to put on the glasses and watch the sun's face being covered by the moon and get the full effect or the full experience, if you will. In the meantime, on this March the 8th, a uh, couple of showers tried to graze us this evening. Not looking at much rain in the next few hours. I think the steadier light rain will occur overnight tonight. This is all part of a pretty broad system, big area of low pressure out across parts of the uh, Ohio Valley, the Mississippi Valley. On the southern uh, uh, edges, uh, I should say, of this uh, storm, we have a severe weather threat, as expected, down along I-10 on the Gulf Coast for, from uh, New Orleans over towards the Panhandle of Florida. Tornado watch in effect for some of those locales. Back here at home, already the Weather Service office in Cleveland has issued some winter storm watches for parts of their snow belt, including Geauga County, Crawford County, and Erie County in PA, and then uh, the Buffalo office. Uh, covers a lot of these counties in, in far western New York and far northern PA, and winter storm watches are out. These will likely be upgraded to winter storm warnings in parts of the snow belts. Um, because, yeah, this is going to be a pretty 
quick but potent little link effect and link enhanced snow event at the end of the weekend. Before then, though, it's the rain that is our story. I think we're looking at just about an inch on average, but that's a you know kind of an area-wide average. There's going to be some places that try to get an inch and a quarter, even an inch and a half worth of rain if the rain tries to come down heavily for a time, which I think it'll try to in the afternoon as our front uh, tries to cross the area midday and into the afternoon. This is when we might see some bursts of heavier rain. Just plan on a washout on Saturday with rain just about all day. It tapers off towards evening, and then here comes the colder air. Flurries at first, but more pronounced and more significant lake-enhanced and lake-effect snow showers on Sunday. The lakes are wide open, no ice, and the air mass will certainly be cold enough, the moisture deep enough, that you know some of this will mean some business. Now it's March, and a lot of this is going to be during the day with air temperatures just above the freezing mark, and so that's a recipe for largely wet roads. Even if the visibility stinks from time to time with a heavier burst of snow, the impacts on the roads should be fairly minimal. But can your grass get covered? Sure. Decks, railings, you know, non-paved surfaces, sure. Occasionally they can be uh, you know, whitened uh, with these scattered snow showers and flurries moving through. Everything winds down quickly then Sunday evening, and we're left with sunshine early next week. In addition to the rain Saturday and the snow Sunday, Wind is going to be a story this weekend. It's going to be blustery both tomorrow and on Sunday. As far as snowfall accumulations, you know, up in the primary snow belts east of Cleveland over towards Erie, PA, a couple or a few inches will be pretty common. Could even see up to four, five, six inches once you're close enough to Erie and into the Jamestown area in southwestern New York, Chautauqua, Cattaraugus counties uh, in southwestern New York, south of Buffalo. In our television viewing area, most of us will, will pick up a random coatings on the grass. Um, but especially around and north of I-80, could you see an inch or so? Sure, that's going to be a possibility. I'm not even going to be surprised if a, you know a couple inches occurs. Mostly, again, non-paved surfaces over towards uh, Sandy Lake and down towards uh, Mercer, and certainly over towards the Venango County line down the I-79 corridor closer to Slippery Rock. Could you see an inch and a half? Maybe even two inches? Possibly. Yeah. Uh, but again, though, the good news is with a lot of this falling during the day in March, with as warm as it's been, the snow is going to have a hard time being real impactful on the roads. All right, quick look at the longer range. These are the Climate Prediction Center uh, panels for the next handful of weeks. Of course, the medium term is looking mild. Once we lose the cold air very quickly early next week, we're going to go from snow showers and wind chills near 20 on Sunday to 60s in just a couple of days. Um, so that's why the 6 to 10 day outlook looks like this. We are going to see that transition to a different pattern, though, as we head deeper into March. But I'll tell you, I'm not real impressed with the intensity of the cold. Will it be cooler? Yes, absolutely. The intensity of the cold, probably nothing that's going to be all that significant. Um, this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. You don't see any deep blues on this. And even today with their weeks 3 and 4 update, uh, you don't see any blue nearby. You know, this the cold that dumps in, which may not even be that strong, it'll just be a cooler air mass, it may relax some already towards the end of the month leading to this kind of a map for weeks three and four, which would take us towards the end of March. So bottom line for you, yes, we are going to head into a pattern change just after St. Patrick's Day, it looks like, in about 10 days. Um, but does it look really intensely cold, especially by March standards? Not really. And, uh, you know, the, the coldest stuff may only be around for a handful of days before the pattern starts to relax a little bit. Will it go back to the blowtorch that we've had for a lot of winter in early March? No, I don't think so. I think I think this kind of blowtorchy, really crazy warm pattern is not likely to return anytime real soon. Um, but it, again, bottom line for you, second half of March, probably a good chunk of April, at least maybe the first couple of weeks of April. Not especially warm, but also doesn't look anything remarkable in terms of cold. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday evening. Have a great Friday night. Uh, hope, stay patient with the weather this weekend and work on those indoor projects. I'll see you back here on Monday for a fresh edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video.